Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So far we have completed six problems on computing the income from capital gain. So if you have watched all the earlier problems, you already got a good command on how to compute the income from capital gain. It's very simple. First, we should take the consideration received. From consideration received, deduct the selling expenses or transfer expenses. We'll get the net consideration. From net consideration, deduct the indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement. We'll get income from capital gain. So two types of capital gain, short term capital gain, short term and long term capital gain. All the problems are based on the theory which I have given in five parts, five videos are there. So without watching those five videos, if you directly come to the problem, you will you'll find it difficult. So my suggestion, watch the uh, theory videos completely. Then only you come to the problems. You can be able to get a good command. So now I'm going to start the seventh and eighth problem in this video. So before starting the seventh problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description. So take a printout and keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the solutions of seventh and eighth problem. Then I'll explain all the points. Come on, see the seventh one. Mr. Akram, age 82 years. 82 years means super senior citizen. If any SSC crosses the age of 80 years, 80 years or more, he is called super senior citizen. And the basic exemption limit for super senior citizen is 5 lakh. And purchased gold ornaments on 10th March 1998 for rupees 7 lakh. The asset is gold and it was purchased before 1-4-2001 because index numbers are given from 1-4-2001. So Income Tax Act says if an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose higher of the following two, actual cost or fair market value, FMV on 1-4-2001. Here in this problem, the actual cost is 7 lakh. Now we'll see how much is the fair rental value, FRV. He took a loan by mortgaging ornaments rupees 5 lakh and interest due up to the date of sale is 92,000. And the same is sold out during the previous year for rupees 30 lakh. So this SSC Mr. Akram, what he has done, he has mortgaged the gold to take a loan. 5 lakh rupees loan he has taken. On that interest of 92,000 rupees is also due. But Income Tax Act says if loan is taken by mortgaging the asset and interest is due, it will not be allowed as deduction. So for this point, simply you have to give a note that loan taken by mortgaging the gold and interest due is not allowed as deduction. Simply ignore that one. And this asset is sold, this gold was sold for rupees 30 lakh. Now you can see Mr. Akram, age 82 years, computation of income from capital gain for the assessment year 21-22. Consideration received 30 lakh. Right? Now, selling expenses 4,000 due, but not paid. This is the first time we are coming across. Interest, uh, selling expenses are due, but not paid. No deduction will be allowed. Deduction will not be allowed. No deduction allowed, right? Put a dash. If it is paid, it would be allowed as deduction. Calculate the tax liability if income under other heads is 12,50,000 for the current assessment year. Cost inflation index for 2021 is 301. Our current previous year, current previous year is 2021 and the assessment year is 21-22. So remember, our previous year 2021 for that the uh, index number is given as 301 one point is there it is not given the fair market value fmv on 142001 so in that case we take the actual cost we take the actual cost so here consideration received 30 lakh less selling expenses not allowed as it is due but not paid net consideration 30 lakh 
From this we deduct indexed cost of acquisition. The cost of acquisition is 7 lakh given in the problem. Index number of the current previous year is 301. And if an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, then index number of the purchase year should be taken as 100. Already I told you in the last so many videos. The purchase year index is 100 because the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001. Now multiply 7 lakh into 301 by 100, 21 lakh 7000. This is the indexed cost of acquisition. 30 lakh minus 2107. You will get 8 lakh 93,000. This is a long term capital gain. Because the asset was held for more than 3 years. The asset was held for more than 3 years. It's a long term capital gain. Now, the SSC is a super senior citizen because the age is 82 years. Super senior citizen. So the basic exemption limit is 5 lakh. Right now, income under other heads. This is the normal income, twelve lakh fifty thousand, given in the problem, and long term capital gain. It's a special income. How much is the LTCG? Eight lakh ninety three thousand. Remember, long term capital gain is taxed at a flat rate of twenty percent, whereas the normal income is taxed at slab system. The so tax rate will be different for normal income and special income. So first we compute what is a tax on normal income by applying slab system. So computation of tax level is tax on normal income. In your slab, income, rate, tax. The first slab is up to 5 lakh rupees because super senior. Super senior citizen, basic exemption limit 5 lakh. So up to 5 lakh rupees. Income is 5 lakh, nil. No tax rate, no tax. The second slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. So 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. The income comes to 5 lakh. The tax rate is 20%. So 5 lakh into 20%, 1 lakh. Next balance. Over 10 lakh. Any income over 10 lakh will be taxed at 30%. Tax at 30%. So total income is 12 lakh 50,000. Normal income 12 lakh 50,000 from 12 lakh 50,000 minus 5 lakh minus 5 lakh. The remaining balance 2 lakh 50,000. This 2 lakh 50,000 is taxed at a rate of 30 percent. So 2 lakh 50 into 30 percent 75,000. Take the total 1 lakh 75,000. So income is 12 lakh 50,000. Tax is 1 lakh 75,000. This is a tax on normal income. Tax on normal. To this we add tax on special income ltcg how much is ltcg 8,93,000 into 20% 20% 20 of 8,93,000 lakh add up 3,53,600 to this we add health and education says mandatory this is compulsory health and education says 4% of this amount 14,140 so tax liability comes to 3,67,744 rounded off Last 44 rupees are there. So ignore 4 rupees. Make it 40 rupees. 3,67,740 is the rounded off amount of tax. Tax liability. That's it. Completed. Now in working note you can write interest on loan taken by mortgaging the gold ornaments is not allowed as reduction. Just now I told you. If a person has mortgaged the asset and taken the loan, interest is due, income tax access, no deduction. Deduction will be given only for indexed cost of acquisition. Next, selling expenses are not allowed as deduction as it is not paid. Remember the point. If selling expenses are paid, then only it will be allowed. Otherwise, not allowed. Finished. So this is the end of problem number 7. Now, problem number 8. Mr. Vijay Raj purchased gold for rupees 5 lakh on 6th September. September 1989 again it is purchased before 1-4-2001 and its fair market value on 1-4-2001 is 9,50,000 so as income tax act says if the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001 the SSC can choose either the actual cost or FMV whichever is higher here actual cost 5 lakh but FMV on 1-4-2001 is 9,50,000 so SSC will choose 9,50,000. 
on 16th January 2005, he has ordered to make the, an ornament of the gold by spending 2,26,000 cost inflation index 130. That means after purchasing the gold, he has made some improvement. What is that improvement? Converting the gold into ornaments. So for converting the gold into ornaments, some expenditure is incurred 2,26,000. So this is, the called, this is called cost of improvement. Index number at the time of improvement is 113. On 14th 12th 2013, he offered to sell this ornament to a businessman and received 1,50,000 as advance. On the agreed date of sale, the businessman negatived the sale transaction and accordingly the deposit is forfeited. This SSC, Mr. Vijayraj, has offered to sell the gold ornaments uh, on 14th December 2013 and he has uh, received an advance 1,50,000 later on the sale transaction was negatived and whatever advance money he has received is forfeited now income tax act says in a sale transaction if the advance money is forfeited if the forfeiture takes place before 1 for 2014 then the advance money should be deducted from the cost of acquisition if the forfeited amount is done after 1 for 2014 then the advance money forfeited is taxable under income from other sources very important point the benchmark or the deciding date is 1 for 2014 before 1 for 2014 forfeited, then it should be deducted from the cost of acquisition. So in our problem, this advance was forfeited on 14th December 2013. That means before 1 for 2014. So this 1,50,000 will be deducted from cost of acquisition. Here the cost of acquisition is fair market value. FMB 9,50,000. So from that 9,50,000, we deduct 1,50,000. So 950 minus 150, 8 lakh rupees is the cost of acquisition. So here I have given, see this note. Uh, the asset was purchased before 1,4,2001. So the cost of acquisition is least of the following two amounts. The first one, actual cost 5 lakh. The actual cost of the gold was 5 lakh. And fair market value on 1 for 2001 is 9,50,000 minus 1,50,000. This 1,50,000 is the advance money forfeited before 1 for 2014 deduct. So 8 lakh rupees is the cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition 8 lakh. That is the new point. Now during the previous year 2021 the ornament is sold for 28,25,000 and selling expenses are 25,000. Consideration received is 28,25,000. Mr. Vijayaraj, computation of income from capital gain for the assessment year. Consideration received 28,25,000 less selling expense 25,000 given net consideration 28 lakh. From this 28 lakh we deduct indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement because in this problem the gold is converted into ornament by incurring an expenditure of 2,26,000 this is the cost of improvement first of all cost of acquisition indexed cost of acquisition what is the cost of acquisition here 8 lakh problem is 9,50,000 so 950 minus 150 8 lakh rupees is the cost of acquisition into current previous year index 301 divided by index number of the purchase year the purchase was made before 1 for 2001 so index number will be taken 100 so 301 by 100 so 8 lakh into 3101 by 100 24 lakh 8000 is the indexed cost of acquisition now indexed cost of improvement now, how much expenditure is incurred to convert the gold into ornaments? 2,26,000 given. So, here 2,26,000 into current previous year index numerator 301. Denominator, when this uh, improvement was done, it is given 113. 
113 is the index number when it is converted into ornaments. So divide by 130. So 2 lakh 26 thousand into 301 by 113, 6 lakh 2 thousand. Add up indexed cost of acquisition plus indexed cost of improvement, 30 lakh 10 thousand. 28 lakh minus 30 lakh 10 thousand minus 2 lakh 10 thousand. It's a long term capital loss. There is no capital gain because net consideration is only 28 lakh. Whereas indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement, 30 lakh 10,000. So minus 28 lakh minus 30 lakh 10,000. You will get minus 2 lakh 10,000. That is the long term capital loss. Now income tax act says the long term capital loss cannot be set off from any other income. The long term capital loss can be set off only from long term capital gain. So if a person is having long term capital gain and long term capital loss, one asset sold and got a long term capital gain, another asset sold and he got a long term capital loss. So this long term capital loss can be set off from long term capital gain, but it cannot be set off from any other income. Otherwise, the long term capital loss can be carried forward to the next year. Next year it can be deducted. So this 2 lakh 10,000 should be carried forward to the next year. The SSC is a super senior citizen, age 82 years. So the basic exemption limit is 5 lakh. So apart from this capital gain, he is having income under other heads. How much is the income? Exemption limit is 5 lakh. Income under other heads is 2 lakh 25,000. 2 lakh 25,000 is below 5 lakh. So up to 5 lakh rupees exempted. That means 2 lakh 25,000 is also exempted. It is below 5 lakh. So the tax liability is nil. No tax for this SSC. Because in this uh, sale of capital asset, he is having long term capital loss. Whereas other income, he is having below the basic exemption limit of 5 lakh. So the tax liability for the current assessment here is nil. Right? Now, the advance money received and forfeited. 1,50,000 was before 1,4,2014. Just now I have given the complete explanation. The advance money is forfeited before 1,4,2014. So this advance will be deducted from cost of acquisition. So here. So this should be deducted from FMB on 1,4,2001. FMB on 1,4,2001 is 9,50,000. So 9 lakh 50 minus 150 is 8 lakh. That's all. So this is the end of problem number 8. So far, 8 problems I have completed on computing the income from capital gain. Inshallah, the next problem will continue in the next video.